Good morning and welcome to another uh, study in the Word. Um, this morning we're going to be studying the resurrection. Uh, is the uh, I've got like one main point. Uh, is the power of the gospel in what Jesus did at the cross or in the resurrection? That's a controversy in the church today. Uh, once again because of misunderstandings and hopefully we can clear some of that up this morning. And so our... Uh, text will be coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and uh, starting at verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 12. I again included the expositor's study notes. I mean that in itself is a study but it's got good stuff to uh say and this means it's time change I'm running a little behind the schedule here and I wanted to read the notes again and so I'll just do it as we do this so uh, verse 12 uh, scripture now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead how say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead Ver uh, notes some were actually repudiating the doctrine of the resurrection Scripture, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? Notes, atonement and resurrection are the two great foundation stones of the gospel, and if either of them is denied, then the gospel ceases to exist. Once again, let us state the truth that if one doesn't believe in the rapture, then one doesn't believe in the resurrection, because they are one and the same. Excuse the noise, a cat is scratching on my recording shed unhandy <laughs> uh, 14 and if Christ be not risen notes if even one sin had been left unatoned then Christ could not have risen from the dead for the wages of sin is death Romans 6 and 23 the fact of his resurrection proves the atonement of all sin past present and future at least for all who will believe John 3 16 Scripture again. Then is our preaching vain, and our faith is also vain. Notes, empty nothings. 15. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he... Um, sorry, I was looking at another setting, and I lost my place. Verse 15 again. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, when he, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. Notes. The scripture, uh, the resurrection of all the saints, hinges completely upon the resurrection of Christ. The former guarantees the latter, and without the former, there is no latter. Scripture. For if the dead rise not, notes, if there is no resurrection of all the saints, scripture, then is not Christ raised. Notes, a petition, a, uh, let me read that again, a repetition of verse 13 to emphasize the argument that the Christian faith is a, in the resurrection rests not on philosophical theory, but on historic fact. Um, on that note, I believe the Roman Empire actually had something in their writings that uh, Christ rose from the dead and they're actually wanting to make him a deity. And so it's in recorded uh, government fact that he rose from the dead for those that uh, don't believe that. Uh, verse 17, Scripture, If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Notes, All who do not believe in the atonement and the resurrection have a useless faith. Scripture, You are yet in your sins. Note, Sins are forgiven and cleansed only by and through what Christ did at the cross and in the resurrection and our faith in that finished work. Otherwise, the sin remains, which presents a situation of calamitous proportions. Scripture. Then they all which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Notes, lost forever. 19. If in this life we only have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Notes. That which is coming in the resurrection is so far ahead of what of that which presently is, that there is no comparison. I believe we'll stop reading there. Um, 
So verse 15, 1 Corinthians is the, or I believe it's 1 Corinthians, is the doctrines of the church. And so here, the whole chapter, he is talking about uh, the resurrection. If you go read the whole chapter, um, that would be a good thing. But for us to do it here, it'd take uh, our whole program about. Um, and so the people were, once again, this, they back in those days, they had the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Herodians. Uh, much like today, we've got the conservatives in the Christian, and we've got uh, liberals, and then like it, it, those that are extremely liberal, that do not believe the Bible, are basically almost atheists. They still call themselves Christians. Those were the Herodians. Uh, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Back in the day, uh, the Pharisees were, I believe, they may have come from, I forget, was it Ezra or one of them that was rebuilding Jerusalem after the Babylon um, captivity. And so they were could be compared a lot to your very conservative uh, churches nowadays your, um, that have really lost. They once were where they needed to be with the Lord, but they're so focused on externals that they've lost the true meaning of Christianity. And then you had the Sadducees, which had a lot of messed up doctrine. They weren't as bad as the Herodians, uh, but they didn't believe in the resurrection. And so here, a lot of that stuff seems like it plagued the church then also. Um, in Hebrews, if we ever get to studying that, we'll see how that you've got to leave the old way and go into the new, but let's not get distracted on that. Um, so the Sadducees didn't believe there's a resurrection. And here, obviously... People have been teaching that there's no resurrection, and so Paul is correcting them and giving them the doctrine of the resurrection. And we even see later on in this chapter how that, you know, we are raised in a different body. Um, there's a spiritual body and there's a natural body. And he goes and explains all that. But my main point, a lot of the church today some say that, you know, Christ's death was a defeat. That, it, you know, any born-again person could have died on the cross. And that is pure blasphemy. That is totally wrong. Only Jesus could atone for the sacrifice for our sins. Because he was the only man. He had to be a man. But man had the sin nature, so it's totally and completely impossible for us to live sinlessly perfect. But Christ did. There is no sin in him whatsoever, in word, thought, or deed. And so, when we say the cross, we use that because that's what Paul used. Um, some people may uh, use a different term, meaning, so some people get hung up on the terms, don't really understand what it means. Some will say the finished work. So when we say the cross, that includes Jesus' birth, life, death, burial, and resurrection, the whole entire thing. But some people are saying that um, Jesus came to show us how to live. And this, I didn't, I'm just thinking about this. If Jesus, and I probably taught this back in the Romans, um, had Jesus only come to show us how to live, then it would be no different than law. It would just be a different law. We still couldn't do it because the law didn't work because that's what the law did. It showed us how we're supposed to be and how we fall short. And so the problem is the sin in us, sin nature. And that's what Jesus did when he gave his, his life on Calvary's cross. And it wasn't a suicide. It wasn't, you know... All this he gave, it was a sacrifice. So these, you know, some there's some pretty blasphemous stuff out in the church nowadays. And a lot of you probably never heard this, but if you go listen to some of the stuff that goes on out there, it gets really wild in the church. I mean, this is not, you know, in secular colleges, you know, that 
don't know God. These are people that are supposed to know God, and they come up with these wild ideas. When you leave the gospel, you get into all kinds of stupidity, and try not to get too distracted here. Um, so, when Jesus died on the cross, he said, it's finished. And let me put a little plug in here for Carl Brown. He was on a program, and someone brought this up, and I never, I you know, always heard you know, and kind of understood it. But when he explained it, for some reason, I guess the Spirit brought it home to me. And I was at work, listened to it. Um, so if you look up Carl Brown Ministries, Facebook, uh, YouTube, he used to have a TV program in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I think just like a one-city outfit. And I think he quit that because he can reach a lot more people for a lot less money on YouTube and Facebook. So he's a very good uh, preacher of the gospel there. Uh, look him up, listen to him. Uh, does lives and all that stuff um, and reruns of his because he's been in ministry for years so he's a lot of valuable input there um, but and we really read that in the notes um, I thought about stopping there and saying that's my main point but uh, and maybe we'll just go back there um, see if I can find it here really quick verse 14 and if Christ be not risen if even one sin had been left unatoned, then Christ could not have risen from the dead. The fact of his resurrection proves the atonement of all sin, past, present, and future, for at least for all who will believe. And so the resurrection was never in doubt. It was a given. Because Jesus... Um, I'm thinking of a verse further down... Um, let me see if I can find it really quick here. Um, yeah, I guess we read it. Verse 17. Go to verse 17 here. Uh, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. And so people get from this, well, it's in the resurrection. No, what he's saying, and you are yet in your sins. Had Christ not atoned, had Christ not risen from the dead then we would have known that he didn't atone for all sin. He somehow failed. Didn't get it done, and we're still in our sin, and we're totally hopeless, and there's no salvation. We're not, you know, we're going to die and go, there's going to be no resurrection for us. But because he atoned for every sin, past, present, and future, if we will believe it and accept it for us, because he atoned for every sin, he could raise from the... It was a given. It was a guarantee. There's no devil in hell. No, nothing the Roman Empire could do. Any other empire, government, or the Jews, or anything. No one could keep him from raising from the dead. It was a given. That is guaranteed to happen. And so it proved that he atoned for all... And so that goes to show that all our sins are atoned for. There's not a single sin that you've ever done that cannot be forgiven. That cannot be, uh, that's not washed. If you will just repent and turn to the Lord, it can be forgiven. And let me say this too. It also, if your faith is now in Christ, you are guaranteed to raise from the dead. It's a, it's a given. You are going to raise from the dead. There's nothing anybody can do. They can dismember your body, they can burn it, scatter the ashes to the wind, but you are guaranteed to rise from the dead when that trumpet sounds. And it's all because of what Jesus did at the cross. And not only that, you're guaranteed to have victory over sin if you will believe it. You're guaranteed to have healing of your body, whether in this life or the next. But let's believe for this life. Um... He, you know, healing in the mind. We talked about the healing, all the, you know, everything. You're, you know, you're guaranteed to get what you need from God now. Not, you know, stuff you want. God, he's in control. He's not a glorified bellhop. Does your bidding. No. We need to live a life of surrender before him and he gives us what we need. But you're guaranteed to get and have what you need for life and godliness in Christ Jesus now that he had atoned for it all it's all based on what he did uh, 
in his sinless life, in his virgin birth, his sinless life, his death on the cross, which that's what it really all come around to. Is the, that's why we refer to it as the cross, because that's where he made the sacrifice. And then his raising from the dead and going to the Father was a total given. There is, so it was finished on the cross. It was finished. The rest was a guarantee, is a given. The rest, you know, even for us now, if you will just simply put your faith in what he did at the cross and accept that and quit the struggle, you can have the resurrection life. You know, you cannot produce. You can struggle and produce and... That's what psychology. That's why psychology is so wrong because it's once again human effort. In all our, you know, and we we can't do it. That's why Christ had to come. That's why Christ had to not only to forgive us of our sins as, and that you know, it's not only that's not a good choice of words, but um, that because that is the greatest thing because that's what our problem is forgiving us of sins but also to help us walk right because even with our sins forgiven we're still weak and we um i like to say it and it's really a mute point it's not really worth bringing up but it's theoretically possible to live perfectly before the lord but there's no human being that ever has or ever will because we are weak in this flesh jesus is the only one who ever did that's why he's our champion he uh Though he was God, he laid down the expression of his deity while let, never losing the possession of it. But he lived as a man with the power of the Holy Spirit in this life and lived this endlessly perfect life. And none of us can do that. We try, but as much as there's always, you know, the devil brings up, and the devil tempted Jesus. It said that he was tempted in every point as we were, yet without sin. So, I mean, doesn't this make Jesus look like a great champion? I mean... None of us, you know, if you're self-righteous, you may think, but you're, if you think that you're a sinlessly perfect person, you're probably so deep in sin, and it's so black that you cannot see, and if you will step into the light and get close to the Lord, you're going to see that you are just laden with sin, and I think I'm uh, running out of time really quick. So, the power of the Gospels and what Jesus did at the cross and the resurrection, is it's extremely important because it proves that it's finished, that he accomplished what he came to do, and it's a given. Now, now our resurrection, our final, and we will be sinlessly perfect sometime. That's another thing. Um, and that's after our resurrection, when we no longer have this mortal body, when it's changed, as he talks later, into the spiritual body. No more problem with sin. Then we will live perfectly, sinlessly perfect. All our mental disorders will be gone. All our, you know where all of that stuff's going to be gone. It can be gone now too, but you'll be finally sinlessly perfect uh, when you were raised from the dead in the final, uh, in the resurrection of our bodies now. And so it's a given. The resurrection is a given due to that Christ atoned for every sin. And that's really the point I want you to see is the resurrection is extremely important as in that it proves without a shadow of a doubt because no one's ever raised from the dead um, that you don't come back from that but because he atoned because of sin sin and because Jesus atoned for all sin and now it's a given and your resurrection is given and your victory and living for God is a given so till next time keep your faith in Christ